Hey guys, it's Anna, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite fragrances that you can get at Sephora because Sephora has their Springs Savings Event. Saving event? An event coming up, and you can get 10 to 20% off your entire purchase depending on what tier you are as a Sephora member. So it's a great way to get fragrances on sale that you can't normally get on sale. And if you want some banger recommendations from yours truly, you're in the right place. I'm going to start off with two honorable mentions. This is going to be very basic of me <laughs> to say, um, but they're freaking good. But they're honorable mentions because I feel like everybody has smelled these already at at a certain point. Uh, Victor and Raw Flower Bomb, if you are into very girly, sweet florals with like a T note, bam. And then we have Chanel's Coco Mademoiselle Intense. The original is amazing too. This is a little bit more modern in comparison to the original, even though I think Coco Mademoiselle is timeless. It's warmer and more vanilla, bang. That's it, that's my short and sweet review. You never get those from me. <laughs> I will say if you're interested in getting a Chanel perfume, now is the time. Now is the time to do it because you can never get Chanel at discounters. And because it's such a popular perfume brand, there's so many fakes out there. So if you have your eyes on a Chanel, like seriously, get it now. I actually personally don't have any more Chanel recommendations other than this in the original because uh, I'm going to be honest, all the other Chanel's that I've tried haven't wowed me. However, Coco Noir. I've only smelled on a test strip. I need to get a sample and test it on my skin, but from the test strip I was like, So it doesn't have my full on stamp of approval yet because like I need to wear it, obviously. But that was very good on the test strip. I'm personally not a fan of the Chance line. I've tried them all. I know they're very popular perfumes. So like if you want one, go get a girl. Anyway, that's it. That's my little blurb on Chanel. Speaking of test strips, okay. A couple weeks ago, my boyfriend and I went to Sephora. We were in there for solid amount of time. I came prepared. I came in with a pen and I smelled about like 50 fragrances <laughs> and I brought them all home with me so I could, you know, take my time with them, experience them because it, it can get quite overwhelming just being in the store and the employees keep coming by and they're like, hey, can I help you? And you're like, <laughs> nah, I'm just here to smell the goods. One of the test strips that absolutely wowed me was Clean Reserves Skin. And I know how loved this fragrance was and this deserves all the hype it gets. When I tell you I could not stop smelling that test strip, like I kept going back to it, that scent was just absolutely captivating me. I ordered it immediately and there were a handful of fragrances that I was like, oh wow, these are good, but they were definitely on the more expensive side. I'm like, I need to buy samples of these <laughs> first, but Clean Reserve is reasonably priced, so I felt safe kind of half blind buying it. Clean Reserve does freshies like no freaking other. I smell this on a daily basis. I walk up to my collection, I smell this, I melt. It's so addicting, I wanna reach for it, I wanna wear it every single day. It's so good. I am never not in a mood to wear this fragrance. And it's amazing because I have so many fun, characteristic, bold, unique fragrances in my collection. That's what the majority of my perfume collection is made of. It's so nice to have those tried and trues, easy reach, good for everyday occasion, stuff you're gonna be in the mood for all the time. Um, I love having my characteristic perfumes. Like that's, that's all 
that's what I'm about. I want things that wow me in my collection. If they don't wow me, I'm not gonna wear it. And this is an understated perfume, but it's pretty. It's chic and it is special and low-key kind of sexy and I'm not trying it all kind of way. Like it's doing the most without doing the most, you know? It makes your mouth water. It has this addictive sweetness from the praline, but you're not smelling this and you're getting candy. It's just this clean, lightly sweetened skin vibe. And then you get the salt and the clean musk. So when you're wearing this perfume, Maybe not everyone's gonna know that you're wearing a perfume because you're just going to be smelling like the most naturally amazing smelling person ever. And it has this very, very, very slight, soft undertone of leather in the way background just to give it a little bit of this sensual vibe. Oh my gosh, this is like the epitome, the a dream of a bedtime scent. Like if whimsical dreams and fluffy clouds had a scent, it would be skin. I will say though that the performance is really lacking. So in order to get the most out of this scent, moisturize like crazy and just go to town, honey. Go to town, spray your whole body, spray your clothes. Um, and I get about a four hour wear doing that. And that is unfortunate because I wish it would just last forever, but it's a scent that's so incredibly addictive to me that I just don't care. Like I just, I just need it. <laughs> Another one that seriously falls in the same line with Clean Reserve Skin is Kaoli Musk. What an underrated perfume. I just have said this recently because I'm, testing all of these spring fragrances right now. And oh, I just love it. You guys, I'm really in a phase right now where I am really loving chic, understated perfumes, but that are not boring. Like that they're just, they're just pretty. And I can understand why Kaoli Musk doesn't really get a lot of hype, a lot of talk because you know, when people just see like Musk, they're like, okay, yeah, let's move on. Let's go on to like Sweet Diamond, Pink Pepper, Vanilla 28, etc. But don't sleep on Musk. For an everyday fragrance that is chic, easy, and very likable, I love it. This scent profile just brings me so much happiness. You get this soft, elegant, powdery vanilla, a clean musk, and some soft white florals in the background. I can barely pick them up, but they're there, and then you get some sandalwood. If you love Kaoli Musk, you will love Clean Reserve Skin, and if you love Clean Reserve Skin, you will love Kaoli Musk. But do you need both in your collection? I say no. I never thought I would be picking up this perfume, not gonna lie. Kaoli's Utopia. My first impressions were that it smelled good, for sure, but I didn't need that kind of typical, well-known vanilla, coconut, creamy, summery, floral perfume. And I tested this fragrance right when it came out. I revisited it a couple weeks ago, just like, I don't know, I don't know why. I just, I just kinda ksh, sprayed it on my arm for the heck of it. And for the rest of the night, I just kept putting my nose up to it. Like I was wrapped in this cocooning, warm, just fun, summery, creamy utopia. And I was like, oh my gosh, what has come over me? I like this. So weird. <laughs> but then I uh, properly did a wear test of it a couple days after that. And I just thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm going to be picking up a 50 mil. It's young, free spirited, summery, has a smidge of that suntan lotion kind of vibe to it but just a little bit because that scent profile really isn't for me. It just has a little bit of that underlying just to give it that sunny vibe, but it definitely doesn't smell like sunscreen. You know, it's a simpler composition, but it totally grew on me. You're getting creamy tuberose, thick coconut milk, like honestly think coconut cream and vanilla. It has a powderiness to it as well. 
it's just a happy scent. And the last Kaoli I'm gonna talk about, which in my opinion is the best Kaoli, is the infamous Vanilla 28. Kaoli is again, one of those brands that you just have to snag during the Sephora sale because these Kaoli perfumes fly off the shelves. They are so popular, so try to get them at a discount. This is one of the best vanilla perfumes I've ever put my nose on, and I am obsessed with vanilla. This is a dream of a layering perfume, like 10 out of 10 perfection, and as a standalone fragrance. This is so completely addicting, mouth-watering. I get a compliment every single damn time I wear this perfume. I gifted this to my sister. It's her signature scent. She's obsessed with it, and she has people running after her, texting her, being like, what are you wearing? What were you wearing today? You smell incredible. You know, that's what a good big sister does. Keeps her family smelling good. This is brown sugar, high quality vanilla extract, vanilla orchid. It has a little bit of a very likable booziness to it just to give it some character because honestly, this is the best straight up vanilla perfume you can get, but it's not boring. Like it's not quite literally just vanilla. It definitely has character to it. You get an amber warming it up in the base. It whole oh, cocooning, incredible. An absolute lifer in my collection. They just took over the fragrance community by storm with this perfume. And get yourself the 100 milliliter bottle. I'm telling you, like, you won't regret it. <laughs> One of my absolute loves. Like, this is a total lifer for me in my collection. This could easily be a signature scent. If I was that kind of gal. One of my favorite perfumes of all time is by far the Seven Virtues Centaur Vani. I will never stop talking about this. So just understand that. This is one of the best woody fragrances you could possibly get. Point blank, period. Just saying. If you love sandalwood, this is a dream. This is one of those perfumes that is me in a bottle. Like when I wear this, this is Anna encapsulated put in a scent. I feel so happy, so confident, just one with myself when I wear Centaur Vini. I wore this to work the other day and one of my coworkers who has never ever complimented me, she was like, oh my gosh, what is that scent? Like she was asking everyone. And then one of my other coworkers was like, it's Anna, she always smells good. Damn straight. And she came up to me and she was like, what is that? And I'm like, do you like it? <laughs> and she's like, oh my gosh, it smells incredible. And I'm like, Seven Virtues Centaur Vini. 10 out of 10 masterpiece, honestly. This has a cool, edgy, fresh spiciness to it from the cardamom, pepper, you have resinous notes, myrrh oil, alibinum, and this seriously vibes with Lalabo Centaur 33, but this is the much smoother version of that. It has a vanilla note that just rounds it out and makes it a more feminine version in comparison to Centaur 33, but it's absolutely straight down the middle unisex. So if Centaur 33 was a bit harsh for you, or if you love Centaur 33, get your hands on Centaur Vani. It would be like the perfect blind buy. Another amazing one from The Seven Virtues is Blackberry Lily. And that one seriously vibes with Parfum de Marley Meliora. And I low key prefer it because it has a slight caramel note to differentiate it from Meliora. This is not a gourmand fragrance. You're not getting a blast of caramel, but you're just getting that underlying that makes it a little bit sweeter. It performs better and it's cheaper. So when I run out of Meliora, I will absolutely be getting Blackberry Lily. Blackberry Lily is so pretty and 
elegance. It smells like Mother Nature's veil. It's beautifully fresh and realistic while still smelling like a perfume. You're getting the aroma of wild berry bushes that are covered in morning dew. So you're getting that fresh, crisp greenery. But if you're afraid of green fragrances, don't be with this one. Fruitiness from blackberry and black currant. You're even getting the wood part of the bushes. Some crisp white florals. It's beautiful. If you can, pick up a fragrance from Tom Ford, because these are hella expensive. This is actually the only full bottle fragrance that I have from Tom Ford, and I've tried a bunch from Tom Ford, but so far this is the only one that's been full bottle worthy for me. Uh, there's a couple more that I wanna test, but Jasmine Rouge, the Jasmine fragrance of my dreams. No, no joke. The compliments I get on this, <laughs> is mad. Every time I wear this, people are like, you smell so expensive, elegant, like just like a lady. Fresh, it's such a likable white floral scent. This is not a jasmine that's indolic, heavy. It's so crisp, natural smelling. Seriously, very realistic jasmine flowers. It's got a woodiness that grounds it and then to bring it up a notch it has some really good fresh spicy nuances to it. You have pepper, ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, sage. It's oh, it's so pretty. By the way I see this being compared to Lush Lust very often and Lush Lust does not hold a candle to Jasmine Rouge, in my opinion. Like, I personally find them to be quite different. I find Lush Lust to be more harsh of a Jasmine. Some more beautiful, feminine, timeless beauties. We got the Mongerlons. Honestly, either choice would be excellent. It's really just what's more your vibe. I can't even really say at this point in time that I have a favorite. I'm gonna need to get way more wear out of the intense I feel like to properly form an opinion because I've been wearing this for so long. This is more spring summer even though definitely an all year round kind of fragrance. This is more fall and winter. Mongrelan is your lavender vanilla with some woodiness, some powderiness, a little balsamic, very pretty girl next door kind of vibes. The intense version is more vanillic. I feel like the lavender is a little bit more toned down in comparison to the original. I find it more cozy, cuddly, date kind of fragrance. And this is just any occasion, any season, any mood. And it is very rare for me to to have two perfumes that vibe in my collection, but I'm so obsessed with this DNA. I had to get the intense. Maison Margiela's Replica Jazz Club. This is the best replica scent there is. So freaking sexy. And I am savoring every last drop I have of this. I would absolutely be getting a full bottle of this if we weren't literally already into spring heading into summer. But during the next savings event, I will absolutely be getting this. But this is one of my favorite fragrances I've ever put my nose on. This is like New Year's Eve in a bottle and the name is perfect. I've never been to a jazz club before. I want to so badly, but what I envision in my head, it's exactly what this smells like. Wow, they just, Maison Margiela does an impeccable job of really replicating moments and places in time. It's, it really wows me. I smell, oh, I feel so dang good when I wear this. This is unisex leaning masculine, so if you like your perfumes to be girly, this is not gonna be for you, but oh, oh, and it's good. You are in a jazz club at night. The mood is set. It's dark with like dim lighting and the jazz club is in this old rustic wood building. You're getting the smell of the rum and the fancy extravagant glasses. This is one of the best tobacco fragrances I've ever smelled so you're definitely getting those fat cigars and then it definitely has a waxy balsamic feel to it some fresh spiciness from the pink pepper and then vanilla 
to make it even more addicting. Next up will be no surprise. If you've been following me, you already know. My favorite summer perfume of all time. Truly, nothing even comes close. Nothing comes close to Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria Coconut Fizz. Holy shit. Holy freaking shit. I am just hit with like a wave of memories and emotions. I feel like I'm traveling through time smelling this because you guys have to do this. You have to do this. If you are ever going on a trip, a special trip, you have to buy a new fragrance before you go and then just wear that exclusively. Create a scent memory and it's, wow, it just does something so magical and incredible. It was my dream to go to Hawaii ever since, ever since I was able to form thoughts, really. I couldn't even conceptualize the idea of Hawaii. Like, yeah, I've seen it in movies and pictures and all of that, but truly going and having that kind of experience on that island, it's like you're in another universe. I never, experienced anything like that before and I really wanted to go in celebration of my graduation and we went had the most amazing time and before I went I bought all of these different tropical summer perfumes to find my perfect kawaii fragrance and the second I smelled this I was like this is the one. This was the winner by a freaking long shot. I don't think I added any of the other samples into my collection. Coconut Fizz is an absolute freaking masterpiece. I've also never smelled another coconut fragrance like it. This is not a coconut that leans sunscreen, suntan lotion. It's not heavy. It's not creamy. It's not cloying. It is fresh, so wearable. Water fruit <laughs> is listed in the notes, which like, what the frick is water fruit? Water fruit? No clue, but it absolutely does have a watery quality to it without the fragrance smelling watered down. It has that cooling, refreshing kind of effect to it, and it has the most natural coconut water scent to it. Um, it's not sweetened coconut, it's not coconut meat, it's fresh chilled coconut water in the most realistic way. It is so ever so slightly perfectly sweetened with just a touch of tonka bean. Honestly, I can pick up on all the notes listed. You get a touch of that crisp, fresh, white floral, a little bit of sandalwood, a touch of that citrusy bergamot at the top. Oh my gosh, it's Hawaii in a bottle. It's Hawaii in a bottle. I knew it was Hawaii in a bottle before I even wore it in Hawaii. It has that aloha vibe, you know? And I wanna keep those scent memories of this perfume, so even though I could absolutely wear this like practically every single day here in California, I will exclusively only wear this during the summer to keep that association. And I have a backup bottle of this, because it's that freaking good. Another one that is so good for summer. I'm gonna be picking up a bottle of this and I know I'm like the last person to freaking smell this perfume. But if you've also not smelled this perfume, I encourage you to. I encourage you to get it. If it sounds like your vibe. Jo Malone's Wood Sage and Sea Salt. Oh my gosh, I knew I would love this perfume just from the name. Like, that's a bit of me. I love Goldfield and Banks. Pacific Rock Moss. Totally unisex fragrance, but it did lean a little bit too masculine. Wood Sage and Sea Salt is the answer. Wood Sage and Sea Salt is perfectly unisex. Like guys, do guys, my man, don't be afraid to try this. I feel like some guys are hesitant to try Joe Malone because maybe there's like a feminine association with it. Don't. Don't. But ladies, if you are looking for an amazing aromatic sea salt summery fragrance that will suit you, 
this is it. And I pick up on all the notes listed except for the seaweed. I have no idea what that's about. So don't be worried about that. Like you're not gonna be smelling like a kelp forest. <laughs> and the sea salt that you're getting is a fresh, clean sea salt. It's not a dirty sea water. Citrus from the grapefruit. Joe Malone kills citruses. They smell so fresh and realistic, natural. You're never getting cleaning product vibes. The sage is adding that beautiful, fresh, aromatic quality. And then ambrette. I feel like that's just a sexy note. You know, it's not trying to be, it just naturally is. Like a sexy skin scent kind of quality. Another great one for summer is Sol de Janeiro Solcherosa 62. And the 62 fragrance is definitely my favorite in the Sol de Janeiro line. And then I think everybody knows that they also have a body spray version of this perfume. It's like the staple gourmand scent. Anyone and everyone loves this scent. It's so happy and sunny, and I really don't know how they did it because I feel like it's very difficult to make a good summer gourmand because usually summer and gourmand just does not mix. At the top, you get a blast of almond and pistachio, and it does retain that nutty quality, but it really does simmer down. I'm not the biggest fan of nutty fragrances, but I love this perfume. It's not too much. It's warm and sweet from the caramel and vanilla. You have a little bit of salt, a bit of a soft sandalwood, you guys, this is so good. Like for any age, you could get this for a little girl and your grandma could be rocking it. Summer vacay. And my last recommendation is Chloe Nomad Absolute. And my favorite is the Absolute version, but the original is also amazing. The original is more citrus leaning and this definitely has a prominent citrus presence, but this has more of a woody tone in comparison, which if you know me, is me. And this is seriously an all year round kind of fragrance. I can wear this in the high, high heat. I actually really associate this scent with my trip to Sequoia. Um, Eric and I went with his family a couple months ago and this was just the perfect perfume for that trip because it just melded so well with the surrounding aromas of nature and the trees like you're just overcome by that fresh smell of wood so it works amazing in the high heat but then also because of that woodiness it's great for the cooler months very versatile would make an amazing signature scent you can see i have such a hefty dent in this perfume and I absolutely will be repurchasing it. I may, when I run out of this, get the original just to have that experience of the original because I really did enjoy it. Or maybe I'll just go straight for the absolute version again. It has an extremely prominent oak moss note and I love that note and perfume. It just adds a interesting, edgy, cool, earthy quality to any fragrance. And then you also have a blast of Mirabelle Plum, which is such a unique citrusy note. I feel like often when people describe Nomad, they say this is bohemian, hippie, desert traveler kind of vibe. And I do get that, but I more so get the woody component as opposed to desert. So those are my top picks from Sephora. I will definitely have an update dated version for you guys. I will be testing more and uh, next time the Sephora sale rolls around, I'll have some new recommendations for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. If you want to see me in any more videos, I'd appreciate it so, so much. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!